we can do it. Okay. I'd like to uh, call the special meeting to order. Uh, date is December 15, 2022. Uh, welcome to the Finance and Audit Committee, December 15th special meeting. This will be a hybrid meeting with Finance and Audit Committee members, city staff, and members of the public participating in the downtown conference room in accordance with public health guidelines for in-person meetings and participating remotely to promote social distancing in this federal, state, and local emergency. First, we'd like to start with roll call. Um, I'd like to introduce staff and finance and audit committee members present, including myself, Brian Westcott, Michael DeMoss, Susanna Hill, Matt Normington, and Jen Will Willisett. Staff present includes, uh, does not, is the inner the finance director is? Board of Central Bank. Yes. So we have budget manager, Ronnie, Ronnie Singe. Uh, oh, there's Major also Dan Cecilia Taylor. Oh, excuse me, I'm sorry. She's not on the screen. Cecilia Taylor. Present. Okay. Uh, and and uh, again, the last uh, management analyst, Adrian Patino. Uh, staff ladies and Adrian, would you please provide instructions to the Finance and Audit Committee and members of the public on how the meeting will proceed? All right. Thank you, Chair Westcott and the members of the Finance and Audit Committee. Welcome everyone to the December 15th special meeting of the Finance and Audit Committee, and thank you for attending. At this time, we would ask that all virtual members of the Finance and Audit Committee please remain on the screen for the duration of the meeting. You will be in control of your own webcams and microphones. Staff will engage webcams and microphones to make presentations and respond to members of the Finance and Audit Committee. For members of the public who are in attendance and wish to apply, wish to provide public comment on an item on tonight's agenda after the chair calls for public comment on the item you wish to speak on. For virtual participants, please engage the raised hand feature at the bottom of your screen. For those in person, please complete a speaker card and bring it to my desk. And for those on a landline or a cell phone, please press star nine. That concludes the instructions for this meeting. As I return the meeting to the chair. All right now, if we have the agenda review, any comments on the agenda for this evening? Uh, we'll move then to the consent calendar. Under the consent calendar, the Finance and Audit Committee may take action to approve routine business items in one motion unless a Finance and Audit Committee member, city staff member, or a member of the public requests that an item be discussed or continued to a later date. Staff liaison, Adrian, do we have any public comment on the consent calendar? Uh, anyone who would like to make a public comment on the consent calendar, please engage the raised hand feature, press star nine on your cell phone or landline, or complete the speaker card and bring it to my desk. Uh, at this time, I do not see any request for public comment on this item. Great, thank you. Uh, then first item is the approval of the October 27th, 2022 Finance and Audit Committee special meeting minutes, which were attached in the package. Um, staff liaison, Adrian, please state the motion. Motion to approve the October 27th, 2022 Finance and Audit Committee special meeting minutes. Do I have a motion? I'll make the motion, Chair. Thank you. Cecilia Taylor makes the motion. Uh, any second of the motion? I'll second it, Chair. Thank you. That's Susanna Hill seconds. Uh, the motion is passed. Uh, okay. So the the. Uh, Special meeting minutes were approved for October 27th. Next, uh, next item is the regular business. Uh, under regular business, Finance and Audit Committee. Um, excuse me, I, I think there needs to be a vote 
um, there's a motion oh, a second. And right. no problem. And no. then some of us, um, we might be raising our hands virtually. So um, if someone can just look at the Zoom screens. And I, I actually was going to comment before the vote that I wasn't at the meeting. So I'm going to be abstaining from the vote. Thank you. Let's go back. We we have the Finance and Audit Committee special minutes. We have a motion to approve and a second. Um, all in favor? Aye. Raise hands, yes. Okay. Uh, any opposed? Okay, the motion's passed. Thank you. Now under regular business. Um, under regular business, Finance Audit Committee considers recommendations from city staff on policy matters or administrative actions that require Finance and Audit Committee approval. First regular business item is we need to recommend to the city council a new finance and audit committee regular meeting schedule. And for this, I'll introduce management analyst Adrian Patino to introduce this item. Thank you, Chair Westcott. Um, so for the committee's reference, I'm just pulling up a quick slide on the screen here um, showing the Commission and committee schedules for um, all of the other advisory bodies in the city. Um, currently, the Finance and Audit Committee is scheduled to meet um, for its regular meetings on the third Wednesday of every quarter at 5.30 p.m., uh, which unfortunately puts us in repeated con conflict with the uh, Environmental Quality Commission, which meets every third Wednesday um, at 6 p.m. Um, so, our staff recommendation for the committee to consider is to move our regular meeting schedule to be the third Thursday of every quarter at 5.30 p.m. instead of Wednesday. Okay. Any discussion of that um, suggestion? The third Thursday of the first month after the quarter. All right. Um, well, I guess any public comment? If any members of the public wish to make a comment on this agenda item, um, please engage the raised hand feature if you are virtual. Please press star nine if you are calling it from a landline or cell phone. Or if you are attending in person, please complete the speaker card and bring to my desk. Okay, we'll get that a moment. I'm not seeing any requests for public comment at this time. All right, thank you. Uh, do I have then a, a motion and a second for the state motion, which is to move the uh, finance and audit committee meeting to the third Thursday of the quarter, every every quarter. Is there anyone that will approve that motion? Sure, I'll, I'll motion to, to move the to move the meeting. This is uh, Normington. Okay, thank you. Any second? I'll second. Okay, thank you. And. I'll, all, let's take a vote. All in favor? We can show of hands. Okay, it's unanimous. Uh, the motion's passed. We'll move the date to the third Thursday of the quarter. All right. Uh, the next is one of the main reasons we're having the special meeting is to review the Finance and Audit Committee work plan. Um, we'll have to do that. Um, now, Adrian, do you have, can you put that on the screen for people? Yeah, I can share. If you can share. This showed up as an attachment on the um, email that was sent out to the committee. So 
this is the, uh, the staff report that was included in the um, agenda for tonight's meeting. Um, so really the main change that um, staff is recommending to the finance and audit committee is the removal of the fourth item, which is the capital improvement plan review. Um, the reason that we are uh, recommending this be removed from the current work plan is um, that this item should be reviewed in conjunction with the uh, annual budget and five-year forecast cycle, which was completed in the prior fiscal year. Okay. And if I pull up attachment A here. You can see that this leaves the approved projects for the finance and audit committee to be number one annual investment policy review um, annual independent auditor report review and open gov transparency portal improvements and community training right and in discussion we talked about other issues other items for instance uh, sale of assets but none of those were there were no others recommended okay um one item we have talked about was, which is really a supplemental to annual investment policy review would be the review of the ESG uh, investment policy that's part of that investment plan, which we've been involved with. So I, I might know that as like section 1.1. It's just to augment because uh, we've talked about that in previous meetings where we would like to do a little more work and possibly just see how other, also other cities are possibly implementing the use of ESG. So that's that's my add to the approved projects would be a what, section 1.1 review of ESG policy. Any other, uh, we could open it up for discussion. Any other items that you'd like to consider? I'm just wondering um, about the parking lot items. Uh, just wondering what our action is around those and a couple of them, I just wonder what they represent. Wait, Adrian, could you expand on those? Uh, do you have background on any of those or? Yeah, to my knowledge, um, the parking lot items that we have displayed here in this version of the work plan um, are 100% um, carryovers from previous uh, work plans from this body that members had uh, at one point in time or another expressed um, some interest in maybe um, reviewing or looking Review. into it in the future when uh, the opportunity felt appropriate. Um, I don't have a ton of background as to when uh, each of these individual items may have been added uh, to the parking lot items list or what the original intent was, but uh, you know, for kind of a comprehensive uh, view of view of the work plan and to um, provide as much you know kind of holistic and comprehensive review of what uh, the committee has considered in the past. We included it here to right. um, just give you guys the, the option kind of full context. Well, let me go through them one line item by line item and we'll see if we have interest in at least identifying that the need and possibly adding them to the approved project. So sale of assets, I assume is, you know, assets owned by the city which um, are available or could be either sold and rented, I assume, if they're needed or just uh, sold outright. Is, is there anyone that would like to see a review of the assets and how the sale of those takes place? So that's parking lot item one. Uh, second one is a review of utility users tax cap. Um, 
which I assume is a utility tax issue uh, from the community amenities fund. Um, anyone is, want, would like to discuss that item? I have a question, Chair. Yes. Uh, my question is, are there any uh, dates associated with how long these items have been on the parking lot or in the parking lot? Not to my knowledge, but. And just from my background on council, uh, I believe that the utilities tax needs to come off of here um, for legal reasons. Okay. So let's. Now, okay, so utilities cap tax will come off the parking lot. The other question is, um, and this is maybe for the council, is what is the status of the library and the funding financing of that? I'm not sure what this is in relation to. Is this about a rebuild or is this yeah. about existing capital improvement needs? So I'm not yeah. sure. I, I believe and I, looking back, I think pre-COVID, I think there was at one point a discussion of either rehabilit, you know, replacing or renovating the library. Um, and so, of course, part of that would be how that would be funded. Uh, should we maybe investigate the status of that overall concept of if the library is under consideration? Um. Uh, may I? Uh, yes. Um, yeah, yeah, I think that this um, this would have to be kind of a, a prioritized project of the city council um, to kind of um, re um, like bring back the discussion of the library. I do know that we recently approved a new expenditure for a new roof for the library. Um, so I believe that. <laughs> um, there was an offer from um, Mr. Ariaga, who's since passed um, for some money for the main library. And then um, this was a while back. And right. then the community shifted to focusing on the new um, Menlo Park Community Campus in the Bellhaven um, neighborhood instead. So my sense is that um, this could probably come off the parking lot because any near term focus on the library would probably have to be council directed. Okay. That's a good now point. Now I'm, I'm concerned that the library doesn't have a roof. <laughs> it has a roof. Um, I think it's 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 a proactive, you know, we all need our roofs updated from time to time. <laughs> and so uh, it's, it's taking care of our assets. All right, so the suggestion is to remove that line item from the parking lot until it's more relevant. Um, the fourth item is parcel exempts from property taxes. Um, again, I, I don't know the history of that. Um, is there any interest from the council? Has that been discussed recently? Because our, our job is really to support the, the council, so. Yeah, I think this is, um... I think this is information that the city has. Um, so it might just be, um, I don't know, maybe staff can answer if there's a map that's readily available that has this information. Um, and I think this is primarily related to Stanford University and um, various properties they, they own around town. Um, so I would um, ask staff what the status is of that from their perspective. Okay. All right, we'll put that as maybe staff can review that and report the next meeting. Is that okay? Yeah, we can see if we have um, this sort of data readily available. All right. Um, now we're open to discussion on any other items that we might want to think about or add in potentially even present those back to the council, city council, if, if they would find that interesting or important. Are there any, I can open it up. Is there 
Any other items that you would like us to consider? You know, I the chair. Yes, go ahead. Yep. Um, I, I would like to, well, keep the remainder items on the developer agreement, uh, community amenities fund. With, with the consultant and contractor policy review, I'd love to see us updated with some best practices on how we select consultants and contractors. Okay. Um, and then one item to add is the, and I'm not sure what the current term is, but it's the former RDA redevelopment agency, which I believe is called the successor agency now. And it's an item that is in our budget or is listed, but there's no details. So it'd be nice to have some, some details, a little background. Thank you. Do you have the, I, the last item? Do we? The RDA, I believe. Let me make sure we have that right. So that the last item you discussed was the RDA. Yes, it's formerly called the Redevelopment Agency, okay. RDA. Um, currently, it is referred to, I believe, as the successor agency. And it's a line item in our budget, but there's no detail. All right, so we, we should investigate what that line item entails. Yes. Got it. Now the, the other, uh, and this is just an idea, but I know with, there's, there's many changes proposed. Um, I believe I had this right for the, uh, Appliances in the city of Menlo Park that have to be converted over time to electric. Uh, the other issue is the, you know, with the new law for electric vehicles that will be becoming more predominant. Um, my question is, should we look into the level of investment in the budget for supporting those and the impact potentially of the uh, need for more, for instance, charging stations, um, other, other issues regarding the supply of, of electricity against the investment, and if there is any investment being made. And I, I think we could probably start with just the, uh, electric, the electric cars and you know, the need for that over the next 10 years, let's say. Is there anyone interested in that or has that anything like that come up at the council? I, I think I need a little more information about um, specifically, are you talking about investments that the city needs to outlay or that our residents need to outlay? Well, yes, or both, or, or support a plan, because I know that's becoming an issue is the availability of recharging stations, for instance, to support the- Right, I and mean, we do have our, our Environmental Quality Commission uh, works aggressively on this issue, including the economics of it. Um, and there are new um, state, and federal and local rebates and financing programs um, coming out almost always. Um, I'm trying to think how the, this committee could relate to it. Uh, um, our, yeah, our position would be on, on if there's any investment being done. Any, I, I guess, can you elaborate on the investment? Well, if it's a in a budget, if it's a budget line item or should be a budget line item to encourage or supplement um, or not, you know, or if we're just going to depend on private and, and other funding from the state. If something else, that, that alone would be where you know, just maybe the first question is a simple, we keep it to the electric vehicles is where 
what is the plan and it might come from the environmental committee and how is that to be funded it might be that simple a question but this is being taken care of by others so it, it might be on the order of the redevelopment agency type question on the line item and what that does so you know i i don't think it it hurts if we can add it it might be a simple answer actually but it might not i agree chair it's good to have it on the list we'll just add that is okay All right, any other suggestions for review or to add to the parking lot? And we're gonna remove, we said the user tax cap and the library financing. And we'll add, uh, we, we can discuss if we wanna move these up or ask the council to approve them, but best, best practices for consultants um, the redevelopment agency line item budget, what it is and the, what it does, and the policy on electric charging investment by the city for electric vehicle charging. So those three, plus the ESG, I, I was going to suggest that's really just an expansion of the already approved projects. I think it's just detail. We we already do go through the review of ESG. So I think it's just a 1.1 uh, add to the approved project. So is um, are there are there any other line items for next year that we would like to, to look at at this point? All right. So, Adrian, I'd like I'd let you uh, state the motion to approve those changes. So, motion to approve the changes to the finance and audit committee work plan. <laughs> okay, as stated. Uh, is there a motion to approve those changes? I'll move to approve the changes. Thank you, Susanna. Susanna, uh, is there a second? Yeah, I'm happy to second that. This is Matt. Matt, thank you. Um, so we'll have a vote all in favor. You can show hands. Okay. Any opposed? Um, uh, Chair, I'm going to be abstaining because it's essentially a recommendation to City Council, right. um, which I'm a member of. So um, I think it should not come from me to me. Okay, and we'll we'll know one abstention from Mayor Jen. Um, and anyway, the motion is passed with four yeses and one abstention. All right. With that, and um, my other question is, should we we try to put a dates, approximate dates on some of these? Um, right now they're they're somewhat well. There's dates on the the required uh, policies, but or should we wait till? the uh, first meeting, which is going to be January 18th or 19th. Yeah, so I, I, um, yeah sorry, please go ahead. I, I was just saying maybe the council, I mean, a lot of these are standardized, but maybe if the council has any, any uh, date requirements, they can let us know. And otherwise we'll, we'll try to target some dates at the first meeting in January. 
Because I, yeah, I think some of these we could do fairly quickly, and others might take a couple quarters. But since we only meet quarterly, um, I think usually the work is done outside and presented at the committee meetings. All right. So last is uh, staff updates. Staff liaison Adrian, do we have any public comment? on staff update items. For members of the public who wish to provide public comment on this agenda item, if you are virtual, please engage the raise hand feature. If you are calling in from a landline or cell phone, please press star nine. And if you are in person, please complete a speaker card and bring that card to my desk. And at this time, I do not see any requests for public comment. Thank you very much. Um, with that, then I move to adjourn the meeting. Thank you very much for your participation tonight, and we look forward to a busy 2023. Thank you. Thanks.